The tallest specimen of tree in the world is the coastal redwood, but perhaps even more impressive than its size is the ecosystem that it creates for itself. What they need to grow and to germinate and to grow quickly from the forest floor is they need a lot of, a lot of shade. They don't do very well in really, really direct sunlight, really dry uh, areas. So what the mature trees do for the seedlings is actually give them uh, an environment that's not direct sunlight, pretty, pretty, sub, pretty diffuse sunlight, pretty, uh, and pretty moist as well. Leather ferns are a species of plant that never grow on virgin soil. It only grows on living trees. Without redwoods, these ferns would be extinct. Ferns need moisture. Ferns, if they dry out, they can't reproduce. In order to reproduce, they actually need uh, water on the ground for that to happen. So the redwoods provide uh, for that moisture to stick around. And some of the ferns, like the leather ferns that grow only up in the canopy, uh, they provide that up high and they also keep them from being eaten uh, by animals like elk. Snails and banana slugs find a welcoming environment in the redwoods because the giant trees create their own weather. The area below is extremely moist. That, coupled with the immense shade, creates a perfect habitat for slugs and snails. They give a lot of, a lot of shelter. As you know, they're very massive. Uh, oftentimes, you'll have burrows that are growing several hundred feet off the ground. Uh, they provide great spots for nesting birds, uh, like the marbled murrelet, uh, for woodpeckers and what have you, for owls. Uh, and they also provide a refuge for, uh, for things like ferns and things that grow uh, under the canopy. Uh, keeps them, again, keeps them moist, uh, keeps them from drying out, and uh, provide just, just a lot of shelter. Overall, these dinosaur trees are a perfect shade resource, landing spot, and place to build nests and homes for almost every animal in the great redwood forest.